Hi, I'm Aaron. My dad got hurt and lost his job when I turned 10, and ever since, he'd never recovered from it. Mom had to work two jobs, and when she collapsed one evening from exhaustion, I decided I couldn't just watch as my parents struggled. I took up my dad's old job, and the family he worked for was kind enough to let me. The one person who wasn't kind at all was the Henderson's daughter, Haley. She was rude, mean, and about as spoiled as a three-month-old carton of milk that's been left out in the sun. Haley treated everyone who worked at their house like her property, especially me. You, servant boy, get me a glass of lemonade, and don't you dare lay a finger on any part of the glass. If I wanted to drink from something a peasant touched, I might as well drink a vial of hepatitis. One time, she didn't want to walk over a patch of lawn that didn't have any grass, so she grabbed my jacket from me and stepped on that instead. Haley also looked down on anyone who was poor. She would always tell me that poor people were lazy and didn't deserve anything in the world. But Haley changed a bit one summer. Her usually angry personality was replaced by something quite weird, especially for her. She was excited, like a lot of the time, and it turned out it was because she'd met a boy. They met on some island resort abroad, and they hit it off immediately, especially since the guy originally grew up in our town before his family moved away. Every single member of the staff worked overtime for a whole week. We woke up early in the morning and went to bed late at night, cleaning every single surface in the Henderson's 12-acre property. I want everything perfect, you hear me? If I find a single speck of dust in here, you're all fired. And then the big day arrived. A shiny black car drove up to the house and Haley flew down the stairs in her excitement. The car door opened and I saw a face I hadn't seen in maybe a decade. It was my childhood best friend. Mike? Everyone who was standing by the manor's entrance to greet the guest turned around in shock. Even Mike stared at me as if he'd seen a ghost. Michael, it's me, Aaron, from middle school, remember? Move over, servant! I need to greet my future husband. Mike, don't you remember me? Mike could barely even look at me. He did his best to ignore me, even. Haley pushed me aside and glared at me for trying to talk to her boyfriend. Homeroom. We sat next to each other. We went to the same middle school, remember? We used to be best buddies till your family moved away. What? I have no idea what you're talking about. Can you get your servant in line, babe? I don't like it when poor people talk to me. One word more out of you, peasant, and I'm firing you so hard, you'll end up working at McDonald's on the moon. You can't possibly know my boyfriend. He's the son of a shipping magnate. He's from a proper family, and you're basically human trash. (laughs) Good one, babe. Now, punish yourself for being such a disobedient piece of trash. Go jump in the duck pond. You'd think I can just say no, but Haley is a special kind of boss. One instance of disobedience and she'll fire people. One time her makeup artist did one eyelash wrong, one single strand, and she fired her and told everyone that she was a thief. Nobody hired her again, ever. I heard that girl lives in a subway station now, so I had to do what I had to do. I reached into my pocket so my phone could at least be saved, but as soon as Haley saw it, she told me to stuff it back in where it was. I lost both my dignity and my five-year-old phone that day. Later that night, after I'd washed myself 14 times just to get the stench of algae and duck poop off my skin, I went up to the manor to make sure everything that Haley wanted for breakfast next morning had been prepared just the way she wanted it. And she had a habit of wanting Turkish delight for a midnight snack that only I could make. But as I went up the steps in the garden, I heard someone laughing and scuffling. And then, out of nowhere, a loud thud. I ran to see what was going on, but I was met with a blur of fabric and hair. It was Haley. She and Mike had been partying all night, and Mike was asleep in one of the bushes. Haley was struggling to get back up to the manor and she must have slipped on the steps as it had been raining. And she fell down. I had a hard time deciding whether it was lucky or unlucky that I was in the right place at the right time and caught her. Oh, my hero! 
But when Haley climbed over my chest and saw my face, she stumbled backwards in shock. I guess she thought I was Mike. But when Haley stumbled, she lost her footing again, and she was about to fall further down. I had a split second to decide. Was she worth saving? But I shook my head. What was I thinking? I grabbed her hand and pulled. And I pulled way too hard so that I stumbled backwards and Haley fell on top of me. It was a good five seconds for either of us to realize that our lips were touching. W- what are you doing? Uh, get, get off me. Haley scrambled back up and ran to her room without another word. She didn't even bother having her usual midnight snack. The next morning, it was like Haley was a totally different person. She was bashful, and she couldn't even look me in the eye. I must admit, even I felt awkward around her. Something inside me was stirring. Haley did a complete 180. She could not leave me alone. Every corner of the property I went to, she was there. When I did some gardening, she would plop on the grass behind me. When I did the laundry, she sat on the washing machine and just stared at me. I wanted to ask her what was going on, but I felt too awkward to talk to her. Things escalated when I realized that she was following me. When I went home, I saw her hiding in the bushes outside my house. And when I went to get groceries for my parents, she was lurking behind the produce aisle. I pretended not to notice, but I saw her every time. One time, a girl from my old high school came up to talk to me and ask how life had been. And Haley jumped out of nowhere and pushed the girl away. Keep your distance. You're standing way too close to my man. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had a girlfriend. She's not my... Yeah, and you better remember it or I'll make your life hell. Haley grabbed my arm and pushed me into her car. She drove for about an hour, and when she stopped, I found myself in a lake house that had been abandoned for many years. Dad used to always take us here until he met that evil stepmother of mine. Now this will be our home, and you can't escape. There are perimeter sensors, and I'll always know where you are. And don't try to scream. No one will hear you. That sent chills down my spine. Haley showered me with gifts. She hired people to fix up the place and made it look brand new again. She bought me a brand new phone, a computer, an S-Box, and a poly station to keep me occupied. But there was no internet. I didn't even have reception on my new phone. She brought me expensive clothes and hired the best chefs to cook us meals. But she saw that I didn't use any of the gifts, and one night I gave them all back to her. Haley got frustrated. Why would you return them? Why aren't my gifts making you happy? Can't you see I'm trying my best to tell you I love you? Why don't you want my love? It was like witnessing hell freezing over. I'd never seen Haley show any kind of emotion before. And my heart broke a little. It turned out I've had feelings for her this whole time. I took her hand and pulled her in for a hug. These... These are all just things. If you love me, show me. Trapping me here and showering me with stuff isn't love. I... I don't know. This is all I know. Every time my dad tells me he loves me, he buys me expensive things. I took Haley to my house. I showed her my family. She saw how my mom and dad took care of all of us, even without any money. Mom and dad cared for six kids, made them food out of a single packet of noodles, a few vegetables from the garden out back, and still, the food tasted amazing. Mom and dad treated Haley as if she were their own kid, and after a few days of staying with us, she realized something. Thank you. This this is beautiful. You have nothing, and yet here I feel everything. Your parents are warm, and they're so kind. I'd never had anyone tell me nice things just because. My own brother and sister don't even talk to me. They left as soon as they turned 18 and never came back. So is, is this what families are supposed to be like? I nodded. I want to be a part of your family. She stood on the tip of her toes and kissed me. 
And I felt them, the fireworks in my heart and the butterflies in my stomach. I was by the country club's pool that weekend, soaking up some sun, when Mike suddenly grabbed me by the collar and stood me up from my lounger. What are you doing here? Did you think you can just sneak in here and nobody would notice? The country club's manager saw that and was about to step in. Never you mind, Jenkins. I've got this. Call security and have this cretin removed from the premises. He doesn't belong here. He's nothing but a beggar. Is he? Haley came up from underwater and walked slowly towards Mike. Oh, babe, didn't know you were here. I've been trying to call you for days. Guard, take this man out of my sight. What? B babe, what's happening? How dare you talk down to my fiancé? Get your filthy hands off him. Fiancé? Are you deaf or dumb? Pick one. No, unhand me. I'm sorry, sir, but violence is never permitted in our club. I'm afraid we will have to revoke your membership effective immediately. No, you can't! Aaron, buddy, please! I can't be kicked out of here! I need this! Dad's business isn't doing so good, and our only chance is if I find an investor in one of my golf buddies here! Please, I'm so close to closing a deal! No! Unhand me! I'm still talking to my friend! The manager looked at me as if to confirm. I shrugged my shoulders and shook my head. Friend? Who, me? <laughs> I'm sorry. I have no idea what he's talking about. The guards took my screaming friend away, and finally, I savored the satisfaction of kissing Haley as Mike was being dragged off the property.